I don't think this game that's out right now is my game. <laughs> I think I think Vanguard uh, kind of. Yeah, I mean, I don't play that much anymore, but it's my game. I fucking actually I have don't so like much fun on this game. Hello, welcome, episode seventeen. Hey, you got one right. Easy Clap Podcast. Hey, listen, this was a very calm intro because I'm caffeinated up. And we're not going to say the saying I said last time about caffeine because I'm feeling it. Um, Anyways, what's up? I'm Jonah Twiz. This is Sean, a.k.a. Soapy Dishwaters. Soapy Dishwaters. Yeah. I didn't forget. I was letting you say your own oh, name. That's surprising. Yeah, you know what? I'm being generous today. Anyways, you know, today is a... I don't know what kind of day it is. Not much happened this week, honestly. <laughs> but we're going to talk about a little about uh, the new Pokemon game coming out. We got a little bit of Call of Duty. What else we got? We got some drama. Hold on. You got some drama. Wait, are we the next drama alert? Oh, I don't let's say, I don't... <laughs> get right into the news. If that's trademark. Do not come. Yo, for me. actually, he's kind of a bitch. So like, he would do stuff like Killer Team Star. That's Live. right. Um, if. For some reason, I know, like, okay, I don't know. You didn't say this when I got walked into the studio, but I look pretty, like, dark under the eyes. I don't know if you can see in the video. Like, I look like... It's a cosplay. <laughs> so, I know usually I'm like, hey, what did you do this week before the podcast? Let me tell you what I did. Uh, had allergic reaction. Oh, <laughs> wow. Because I always do. And I, this time, for some reason, I was like, this facial cream will be fine on my face. Even the last time it gave me an allergic reaction. So... <laughs> I woke up and like my whole eyes were like, doof, like puffed out. And now I've got these like incredibly dark and red circles underneath my eyes. Um, I, I told 2000s gamer dude, I always get a shout out. I think it looks kind of hot, honestly. <laughs> wow. Subin, if you're watching this. Oh, Subin's not watching this. <laughs> um, Yeah. So like, I honestly like, maybe this is a like, character flaw of me, but. I kind of like the look of like tired and like, I don't want to say drugged out. That's the wrong word. But like, you know, this whole like, um, hey, this is how I talk. <laughs> <laughs> if you like, if you like that, go watch episode one of the Easy Clap podcast. You hear some true twiz enthusiasm in That's that true. one. I'm starting this one out strong. So I'll move it on to you. What did you do this, this past week? week? Yeah, uh, nothing much, really. Just more Overwatch. Um, actually, recently today, I had the day off um, and I decided I was going to learn a new hero. Okay, listen. I had the fucking day off. Never told me you had the day off. Oh. We definitely could have been playing games. Okay, whatever. Oh, I was playing. I told you I was playing today. Um, yeah, I know. I figured you were, like, pretending to work while also playing. Oh, no, no, no. I definitely had the day off. I don't do that. I'm a good worker. I work when I'm supposed to work. Definitely. Um, but you reminded me that I had a account that it was long lost into the Overwatch oh, files. boiled noodle. Oh, good old boiled noodle. AKA Soapy, AKA Jing Gong. Um, <laughs> you just listen to your yeah, a, all a, my, all, alias, aliases? Yeah, all my Overwatch names. Uh, so Boiled Noodle is going to become a ball one trick account. So if you see a level 30 Boiled Noodle. Don't think you got a Smurf on your team and you're going to no, win. No, you don't. You definitely <laughs> don't. Um, because I'm struggling to figure out his like tech. So I can, if, if, if a healer's out of place or if a squishy DPS that's not McCree, Reaper, or May is out of place, I, I can pretty much handle him. As long as my aim's fine, but that's true. When it, I can't figure out the like slam multiple people and then get out without getting absolutely abused. But I told you earlier today, I played a game and as soon as I slammed one time on ball, they immediately switched to Brig, Ana, Sombra, and like May yeah. or Reaper. And I realized really fast that ball becomes not fun. After yeah, that. like on so you know because I play a lot of ball. In fact, ball might be one of my best heroes. I think it's like one of the most fun characters to play and like has one of the highest skill ceilings because it's yeah. like some people are just bad at ball like if you don't know how to play him you're gonna lose but i think ball is just like right or roadhog in that sense but also gets absolutely abused in the counter yeah that's what i was gonna say is like he's so easily counterpicked like i know most people are like oh well like the, the ball's just running over us i'm like bitch like you could pick there's a character in each of the like hero slots that can counter ball to the point where you can't even play him and you yeah. can play just one of them. So like, so for all you complaining, we'll let you know what they are. <laughs> Roadhog. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, I was like, before we get into that, it's like some tanks you feel like, so if you're playing like, I don't know, Zarya 
or Reinhardt. Well, maybe Reinhardt gets countered by Monkey, but a lot of times there's only just like a healer or a DPS or a tank that counters you. Ball has one in each category. Yeah, yeah. It's just... He has multiple ones in the DPS I know, category. and it's like the thing, the good thing though is that most people don't play those heroes or are good enough with them. So like when I'm playing Ball and they switch to Sombra, sometimes I worry, but then a lot of times I'm like, dude, people don't know how to play Sombra very well. So like, unless you're playing in a mega high lobby, like you don't got to worry about it. Yeah, no, but when you have multiple, there was, I slammed, I got slept and tied frozen shield bashed <laughs> and i was like this game is just fun bro cc yeah i know honestly like i, I told you this i know people are always like you're just getting hard countered like switch off ball because they've got like a brig something like that brig's not a counter to ball anymore like honestly i don't have any problems with brig because if you keep your distance with her with your gun you could just spray down her shield right yeah tracer on the other hand oh holy my shit, gosh bro. there was a good okay. tracer and i was like getting because I, I was doing what you do is like roll around. Don't don't really worry about my healers and just go get the megas. Yeah, dude. She was fiending for me like a <laughs> red baron, dude. They, I was like, can you please you just traveled eight miles across the map to still keep peppering me? Leave me yeah. alone. Like in low lobbies, most people aren't smart enough to know that. But once you start getting into like master lobbies and stuff, Tracer is the hardest counter to ball. It's and not soldier sometimes too, because he can just hit you that like constant damage from like any range. And yeah, oh my God, like, it's annoying. When you, but when people play Sombra and you're on ball, you just play differently. Like either yeah. avoid places, you know, Sombra's going to be, or like don't play in their back line. Just play like, like when anyone gets out of position, like you single them out. Yeah. But Tracer, you don't have that option because she's fucking she's all over everywhere. The place. Yeah. And she seems, when you're on ball, she seems to have unlimited blinks. Dude, yes, I know. She's faster than you. So like, yes. that's just the problem. Anyways, um, I played Overwatch with you for a while. I think I didn't say what I did game-wise though this week. Like, first off, I skipped a couple nights of playing games because I'm slowly falling back down to the rabbit hole of like watching too much anime again, which... A lot of times it's reading manga, but I can do that while playing video games in between queue times and stuff. So like sometimes I'll be reading like Yuri manga and like having a good old time. But I was like, you know what series I never finished and I saw a TikTok of it was Bungo Stray Dogs and I love that series. And I was like, I stopped halfway through season two. So in one night I watched all of season two and I was like, well, yeah. listen. I <laughs> That's kind of like where I am right now because I just finished uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure season four, which is Golden Wind. Let's go. Giorgio Giovanna. Wait. Yes, it is. It's You're... part five. Is it? Yes, it is part five. I promise you. Part four is Diamonds Are Unbreakable or Diamonds Are Forever. What are the fucking it's called? Okay, well, with Joe whatever. I know what it is. Bucciarati is up there with top five, probably favorite anime characters He's of all so time. Cool. Yeah, he really is cool. But I was telling Twiz that I'm like in a slump right now because I need now I need a new anime. And this is always the hardest thing for me to fully commit to one because trust me, he warned me about the like JoJo's animation style and I was skeptical and I was. it. I kind of took like four weeks to get through like two episodes. Dude, but it grows on Yeah, you. but then eventually I was like watching like four or five episodes a night and like <laughs> forcing myself to go to sleep in between episodes so I could wake up in the morning. And right now I'm, I'm two episodes into Attack on Titan because that's so mainstream that I feel like I'm not doing like my anime service if I don't watch it. But he warned me that the beginning is very grueling to get through. And so far it has been. Yo, people gave up on that series. Like so many people I know have given up on the series because they like see the hype of season three and four or whatever it is. And they're like, oh man, I want to watch and have so much fun. And it's like, bro, you got to get through the first two seasons. Yeah, you're I, not see, gonna well, have fun. I keep seeing all these things on TikTok. People are cosplaying. Like that's the most that's showing up for any like cosplay or any TikTok about anime. And yeah, I'm just been like, I mean, not disappointed because it's, I mean, it's a good, it's well animated and everything, but so far the story's kind of mid. It's like super mid. Yeah, I know. And they never explain, at least in the episode I'm at, what happened after the Titans attack the first town. They, they're just like, oh, that happened oh, two yeah. years ago. <laughs> like just jump cut. I was like, like, wait, they were murking everyone. What was going on? Who stopped it? Yeah, I wanted to, like, I had so many just, questions. No, yeah. They're just telling you like, hey, this is why the world is what it is, but not necessarily like. Well, they had the, that like colossal Titan that just, just peeked over the wall. I was like, yeah. hey, what's up? Humpty yeah. Dumpty. Like. <laughs> Like and the, but then they just jump cut and I was like okay wait there's I'm fine with there being plot holes in anime because I get it there's things like that especially like in Naruto but like yeah you can't world build perfectly and have a like 12 episode series or 24 episode season you know what I mean yeah so, so I was like at least give me some explanation but maybe I don't know maybe it explains better in the manga who knows but I'm being a hater so far maybe who knows I don't know what my next anime is gonna be I'm not sure Attack on Titans actually it maybe yeah. Full Metal Alchemist I've given you know I've given you a couple series that I think. Sometimes the best series are short ones that have a beginning and an end. Got a high school. Got a high school was one of them. That was the twelve episode. Yeah, and okay. It was the best twelve episodes. Exactly. Of my life. So like sometimes you hit twelve episode shows and they're like just absolutely what you need and they're 
short enough to be like i want more but they're not long enough to where it's like there's filler episodes see there's, you know, a one that's like that that always gets recommended is a kamaga kill but like that's so dark oh uh, yeah i'm not sure that's up my anime it's old too the manga is really good but that's because manga has way more so much more time to to like fill out a story and yeah. like there's no filler in manga technically because it's like that is the source material okay you know i know I, mean? I know i know this is a gaming podcast but i have a question right now oh we are we're, talking about anime yeah <laughs> we're, we're, we'll, we'll switch over i promise but quick detour what anime are you waiting for this year to you've come out yeah you mentioned it to me before it's like chainsaw hands or chainsaw chainsaw head. man <laughs> yeah i don't know I, okay so it's like edward scissor hands there's a, but there's chainsaws. a lot of like good shows that are coming out this year chainsaw man is supposed to come out i read part of the manga but then chainsaw man fell into that like overhyped like the, the, it's like they knew they got popular and then i feel like whenever shows get like that they inevitably end up bad because they try to appease yeah and like it makes it hard to watch shows knowing that they're supposed to be so good and that's part of the reason why i didn't like um what's the fucking omega bullshit show that you like the Jujutsu Kaisen? Jujutsu Kaisen, bro. Oh, I love that show. So listen, there's a show with a similar name that's better than it, and it's Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen. That's the one I sent you. Or it's Juni Ju 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 Tyson. What, oh, what? yeah. I'm I was like, like, bro, these names are so hard same, to say. Juni Tyson. Same. Similar name, different story. So much better, bro. Like, sometimes there's diamonds in the rough, and, like, sometimes it's, like, I, Hunter Hunter was one of those shows that was, like, overhyped but good. Jujutsu Kaisen was an overhyped show that was bad. <laughs> I think that's a hot take, but going well, tra transitioning off of that, let's get into some some esports. That's well, true. Not, maybe not esports. Let's we're, do we're gonna do gaming. Why don't we do esports first, and then we get into like all the Pokemon stuff? Because I think a lot of what we have to talk about today is Pokemon. Yeah. Um, and then we'll finish this anime talk later because there's a lot I want to say about it. Oh, <laughs> not on the podcast. We can do it after the podcast. Um, so first we'll start with the Call of Duty League. Okay, so they. We had briefly mentioned that they were potentially going to be adding new teams this year. That's right. So it's very convoluted, but basically some actual like team slots got moved around with like teams selling their spots to other teams and transferring titles so that like uh, that's like the whole like optic and envy merger. Yep. They, so now they have one team because they both had a slot. So there was a slot up for grabs. So Dallas sells their spot to Oxygen Esports, which is now the Boston slot, which is the Boston Breach. Not to be uh, confused with the Boston Uprising. No, but okay, this so their emblem for anyone that did, just not gonna fucking look it up. It's just listening. It's just a B with an X. <laughs> well, it's like B for breach, and it's X marks the spot. You're gonna breach right here. It's like a Rainbow Six Siege reference. I don't know. Yeah, do you know what this makes you think of? It makes you think of like paintball. Like, yeah, I it was looks thinking like, like a skate game. Also, dude, yes, yeah, like it's. I mean, it's cool, and I like the name, and I like that they're green because. The Boston Celtics. That's what I think of the most. Oh, that's just, true. Yeah. Like they, when I think of Boston, I just think of when Optic and Envy merged. Did they keep the green, or yeah, did they go so, blue? They're green. Are we gonna have two green and, green black, and teams? black? But they're like, what is Breach gonna be? Green and white? Yes, I think so. Oh, that's actually this is this sick. is a green and white team. Um, yeah, they're like it's like a D with a star, and the star is green sometimes because mm. it's like the Dallas and it's like Optic Dallas, and shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know, dude. Like, this is like one of those middle of the pack teams. So, like, or like logos. So, I have them up right here. So, just as a refresher for you, at least, I know what all of them look like. We can, we can, let's rank where this goes on them because there's some pretty good logos. Like, the Florida Mutineers have an amazing logo with yeah. their, like, I like the LA Thieves, though. I think like that's pretty, that yeah. fits LA. And it's a new, I mean, new too. Like, it makes sense with the whole 100K okay, shit. Toronto Ultra, if you're a fan of their logo. <laughs> Listen, they have a logo. It's just like a little, like... Okay, yeah, but their main logo is literally just Ultra in, like, <laughs> Times New Roman font, bold, all caps, boring. I Look, like the there, Seattle Surge. There's the, there's the Optic Texas one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Seattle Surge is cool. I think... Wait, Los Angeles. Oh, Gorillas. That's like Gladiators. Oh, no. Same same organization, same colors, but yeah, they're Gorillas. I, honestly, some of these logos aren't very good. <laughs> no, actually, these Call of Duty ones are... Kind of bad. Kind of bad, yeah. I think my favorite is I like the New York subliners because to I mean it literally makes you think of a train. Like yeah, I think it's like it a does. I think it's a cool color. Like a mind too. the gap kind of thing. Yeah. And then Atlanta phase because I think the phase logo is like so classic. Yeah, it's just like it's one of those things they got to keep. And then like I said, like the Florida one. So like Boston, 
it's up there, but this is just a basic ass fucking Call of Duty logo. I think I like the LA Thieves the best because if, if that was on a hat, I think that would be the most. That would be the best logo for a hat. Yeah, it looks like Los Angeles to me. Um, and then we can talk about the people that are on this team. So yeah, this two has veterans been, and two newbies. Yeah, this has been like going around leaked all this stuff for like fucking two months. I swear to God. Um, so we got Nero Poison, Capsidal, Methods, and TJ Haley. So Methods has won multiple championships. He was on the Toronto Ultra and for some reason got benched. Now listen, this was controversial when it happened, but everyone on that team is European but him. And he was one of the one of, if not the best player on the team when he got benched. Oh, so they were thinking for a European player. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah, okay, dude. <laughs> it's like the Florida Mayhem. Hey, we're gonna go all American and then be like, psych, now that you're gone, yeah, I know. We're so, gonna sign a bunch of international players. That is absolutely what happened to Methods. That's and savage. He's a very good player. You know what I mean? So like it's a shame that, that happened. And then TJ Haley But at least he gets the opportunity now to like build a new team. That's true. And like I don't know how much he had on the like like the picks of these players, but they seem to, I've watched some of their streams when they like a uh, scrim and they seem like they get along pretty well. Um, and then TJ Haley has been on optic, like most famously where he had success mm -hmm. playing alongside like scump and dashy and stuff like that. And so like very good player. He just never fit in everywhere that he went. It just kind of felt like that. He never had this, like he was the best player on his yeah, team. Anywhere never he goes. The hard carry. Now he can be that player. Um, unless one of these rookies step up, like, so Nero, he one time, this is all I remember of Nero, is that he was supposed to go to a major one year and then literally like told his team he couldn't make it the day before the tournament started. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck is that about? You know what that sounds like? Um, uh, what's his name? The ex-optic uh, player that did that to like Ghost Gaming or something like that? I'm, I don't know. I'm not he did, sure. He did the last tournament. He played for optic back in the day. Oh Lord, um, I don't, I don't remember. All it makes you think of like people that have benched themselves. Like Gunless benched himself for e United, and he did the same thing for LG. So, <laughs> like, oh, you know, I mean? some of these players are like that. Capsidal, I don't know too much about. I honestly, I watched him on like challengers rosters and stuff like that. But once again, one of those players that I never thought of like was the best player on his team. But maybe it's maybe they just work really well together. I don't know. So do you um, think they win? They win some games though this year. Yeah, they're a middle of the pack team. I think when you have someone like Methods and TJ Haley who are used to being on good teams, historically Methods was on one of the best teams of all time in World War II. So like he knows how to win. Yeah. I think you can't lose too many games like this. Or I mean, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're not gonna be the worst team in the league. Um, there is some players. Bold prediction. There it is. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> what, you're not gonna be <laughs> Okay, if I had to place them right now, I would say like a sixth place team. I could probably name five teams better than them without even like watching any of their streams. Like Minnesota Rock are better than them. New York Subliners are better than them. Optic. Optic is going to be better than them. Atlanta. LA Thieves, Atlanta. And then that's probably where they fit in right there. You know what I mean? Oh, I forgot Toronto Ultra. But so yeah, so like sixth, seventh place. So we'll see. Uh, Call of Duty is weird. I think the one interesting thing about Call of Duty that you don't get with other games is that like they switch games every single year and sometimes like it's just not your game yeah you know what no, i mean seriously i don't think this game that's out right now is my game <laughs> <laughs> i think i think vanguard uh, kind of yeah, i mean i don't play that much anymore but it's my game i fucking actually I have don't so like much fun on this game but i said it from day one i said it from my vanguard review <laughs> go back into the easy clap files that this game was mid at best i think i don't know it I, we're not going to get into how much we think about the game anymore because it's months later, but I enjoyed the game enough to like keep playing it, but I've not found myself going back to it one more time. <laughs> but speaking of Call of Duty, something about Call of Duty that we can both agree on is how Jet bad, Pass. well, how oh, bad okay. Warzone is. But <laughs> but transitioning to Warzone, Ricochet actually has Dude, the new anti-cheat out that's there. That's kind of sick, bro. And the anti-cheat, um, I saw a video where if, the, if you're fighting against someone who is cheating, you will get like the hit markers like you are being shot, but your health and your armor will not go down, but you can still do full damage to the <laughs> cheater. And that's like, uh, like it's a, it's almost a meme because it's like, yeah, we're going to let you play in these lobbies. I know. But you're just going to get absolutely shit on every time. Yeah, I think the best part about it is like you can load into it not knowing that like you're being that, targeted for yeah, cheating. That you're already under like Bro, supervision. I saw the best clip before we came here today 
and a streamer that had like hundreds of people in his stream he was like playing and then he starts shooting someone and he's doing no damage he's like what's going on and is then it aiden no 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 it's not aiden. i think aiden no. aiden if, if if any aiden <laughs> fans are here aiden you use wall hacks you were caught did you see the video of him getting caught with walls no. all of a sudden a hitbox appears through a door and uh, he aims in immediately where it's at and then he says it's a glitch my gun's not even shooting or dealing damage Oh, I didn't see that. Yep, it was all over Twitter. Oh, Aiden, God. you hack. I mean, if you don't think that all your big favorite streamers are using something at least like a Cronus, you're high. Yeah, some of them definitely are. But like, he was like complaining to his chat. He's like, I don't know what's going on. There's got to be something wrong with my controller. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, it's like, dude, shut the fuck up. Uh -huh. Like that. I think the best part is it'll catch people that stream like that with yeah. anti cheat on, on stream. People are gonna be nervous to stream. And I think. The, the one thing you could also tell if they're cheating, if all of a sudden their gameplay just gets to shit because they're like, okay, I'll turn off the cheats and they're going to start like never winning games. Exactly. And they're going to be like, wait, what? why'd your KD go from yeah. a 3.0 to a 1.2? <laughs> You're like, why is my streamer bad now? Yeah, dude. The problem is they've already built like, even if they lose like 50% of their fans, they're still making enough money at that point. So, or they've like made which, enough which, money. Yeah, which sucks because it almost justifies still doing it until you get caught, but... Yeah, cheaters suck. Because like if Nin you found out Ninja was cheating, he'd still have more money than you'd ever make. So, bro, that might have been a segue, but Ninja fanboys are actually as bad as every other fucking like we said. Phase earlier, Optic. Yeah. Uh, what's the Nick Mercs? <laughs> oh my god, dude! If you're part of M Fam, fuck you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I do like Timmy though. I do like Tim. I don't. Um. I What's, just like him because he gets he's the butt of the joke 90% of the time. And the fact that he just like embraces that, I think that's awesome. Uh, he doesn't. Okay, listen, I'm not his target demographic. My problem now that I've gotten older is that I'm no longer the target demographic for a lot of these streamers. And like so they are a little cheesy sometimes. And not even that. Well, yeah, well, that includes like fan service. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, sorry. I meant to say that including like their primary audience is like, uh, I don't know, men, but like young teen yeah, boys Yeah, like, like middle school to early high school <laughs> yeah. age. Like literally, like back when we were like playing like super intense, that was like probably the most intense we ever played Call of Duty. Yeah, like maybe then I would have been like, wow, I'm enjoying watching your stream. But now I'm like, dude, I'm so fucking annoyed. <laughs> like, can you just stop being annoying for two seconds, Tim? Like the same thing happened with like Courage and like, yeah. uh, see what what I like is like, like Pomage now. Now that he's gotten older, he's also grown like, oh, like maybe my target demographic doesn't need to be those people. He's got way chiller streams. Like I like people like that now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like competitive focused ones, but uh, fanboy type of streamers. Speaking of fanboys, I think it's about time that you uh, pick a side for this drama alert. Oh, dude. There's, there's, okay, listen, there's a right side and a wrong side, I think. This is one of those like harassing women on the internet. Okay, let's get into it. Um, So... Pokimane has gotten into some drama recently with Ninja, and I never say his name right. What's his name? Jadavion. Is it really? I think so. Or Jadiron. I don't know. I'm going to be wrong. I have no I'm probably wrong too, but Listen. that's just when I see his TikToks and stuff, that's just what my brain processes. You've seen as. it before? Yeah, on TikTok. I've never heard of this guy in my life. Dude, he, oh my gosh. He's like all, he's like literally a comedian on there, but he's like almost like, like boot gang like where he's like doing stuff that's like borderline <laughs> like okay that's like funny but it's also like fucked at the same time mm, but like I, like if it happened to you you'd be like livid but because you're watching it happen to someone else you're like, uh, like lol like kind of thing so he does that he like purposely like pushes people to their breaking point oh. and then when they break they're like oh my god content yeah you know what i mean to me like i i looked him up after this and like i was like wow what a fucking cringe lord like he's one of those that's like would say a racist joke and thinks it's funny says something sexist and thinks it's funny and like i think it's maybe G like it's either gideon or gideon <laughs> grow, <however> you... <laughs> honestly just grow the fuck up that's all i have to say basically he got mad because like pokemon got she watched what uh avatar like the movie and got a like a 14 day ban or something like that and, like or, toast no it's like two day ban or what, unless that no, was toast. it was like it, it was a few weeks i think if not whatever but he was basically like poking fun at that and stuff like that and how like oh because she's a woman like she's not gonna get like a bad ban or something like that which first well, off she's also like the face of twitch too i think that's what they were like saying and also like they wanted to see like twitch take action on the yeah. top and so they were saying like oh she's not gonna get as bad of a penalty because she is twitch kind of thing yeah but like 
that's fine. You can say that, but you don't need to include that she's a woman streamer. Like, no. what does that have to do with anything? And then he did hate raid. Yeah. So like, so then because of that, he sends his whole little like crew of shit posting, whatever. I'm okay with a good shit post, but they're like cringe shit posts. So that's not funny. Like go into a chat, talk shit to her. People were sending her DMs and stuff like that. And it's like harassing her at this point to the point where it's like, she didn't want to stream anymore, which if, if you're stopping someone from doing their job, like uh, that is a problem. I know it's, I know it's like very basic just to be like, well, they were just talking in her chat, like grow, like. It, just ignore it like don't get cyber bullied or whatever like you know the meme that's just turn like the computer just off. turn the computer off like okay but it's her job so like relax um so she couldn't interact with the people in her stream so then he they, gets banned he gets banned 14 day ban and then like he cries and cries and like ninja's like oh well i'll talk to my twitch representative and i'll see what i can do big and old then, ninja like, swinging the dude like shut the fuck <laughs> yeah okay and like ninja like all of JD on Jideon's fans go to Ninja, I guess, because they're like, "You're a big streamer, you can help us." Yeah, and then Let's like, team. I know. <laughs> and so he you says, "You want a duo queue?" He's like literally on stream says, "I'll text him and see what I can do. I can't promise anything, but we'll see." And then tries to say, "I never said that." And <laughs> it's like, okay, there's like, you can't say if you're a big streamer, you literally can't do anything because literally there's every second of your life on it's stream. Documented. Yes, like you make it, you could delete the stream right after, like if you like. If you slip something that you were like, oh, man, I shouldn't have said that. You, you can go delete it. But one of the 5,000 people that are watching you, like, is screen recording you because they know they can get big on exposing you. Exactly. Kind of and, like, so then. So he tried to go back on his word. And there I was know. so much, so many receipts that, like, bro, that I have screen recording of you saying exactly what you said you didn't say. Yeah. Now, like, I, th this part I don't understand, though, because. First off, why is Ninja getting involved in drama unless it's to get popularity? Because that's what Ninja it is. doesn't really get that many views as much as like. Well, ever since the mixer tank. Okay, so yeah, exactly. And like Pokemon, she always is streaming with people like Valkyrie. She's streaming with like Toast. She's streaming with uh, Sykuno. Sykuno. Yeah. So like these people are right now. Corpse the, husband don't want to leave them out. Yeah, exactly. They're the biggest group right now on Twitch on YouTube streaming. Like it's almost like when like. As bad as it sounds, like Kanye West always goes after who was ever like number one or two in the media at the time, Dude, like I to know. have beef with. And it's almost like how much of that is scripted behind the scenes. It's just like, I'm going to fake beef with you because it'll make both of us more popular and we'll get TMZ headlines and stuff. Yeah, it's like shit that like Jake Paul and Logan Paul would do. Yeah. So like, they, I get I'm going to fight <laughs> Elon Musk in the ring right now. They're the biggest streamers right now, so I'm going to start drama. But then he takes it too far and starts messaging her and being like, wait, let me read this because... All of our fans need to definitely know what he said because this was recent. This was, he said. This is actually what he said. He can't go back on this. Yeah, we have, it, like, she, speaking of having the, receipts. The best part is. Twiz is, over here off, keeps his receipts. Why would you message a influencer who streams about drama when she's live streaming? She literally like read she's it. she's not going to post to her And she chat. literally just said, hey, chat, look what he said to me. He said, hey, just so I want you to know, I swear in my grandfather's life who just passed away that I didn't text my Twitch rep and you're making a big mistake. So he's using his like, I'm going to intimidate you, which by the way, you're not allowed to do. Like, you know what I mean? Like intimidation, like you can. Hey, you're, you're being too loud. Ninja <laughs> may, he may, <laughs> he may come after us. And you know, our millions and millions of viewers, we could lose all of those That's if true. Ninja decides to take legal action. Yeah, I know. So us. he's like, we're going to sue you now for defamation because I you know never what, Ninja? said that. We're beefing right now because I'm trying to get famous. I'm trying to get some views. Oh, <laughs> fuck Ninja, oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> fuck Ninja, dude. Samurais are better. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say Samurais? Yeah, Samurais and Ninjas. What's a Samurai? Is, oh, I don't know. Is it a Ninja? Oh, I thought Samurai is what you throw, like the little... That's a shuriken. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. We're talking <laughs> about anime, and this Wait, guy's Genji, never seen an episode Genji of throws shurikens. shurikens, not samurais. Yeah, he, he throws Holy physical fuck. bodies at people. <laughs> Anyways, I thought I would just bring that up on the podcast because it is technically gaming related. And and who doesn't like drama? I know you all like drama. I, I know I have a very clear side on this because she was saying that it's stemming from like misogynistic views from Ninja, which does make sense because if you remember ninja said that he doesn't stream with girls what did he, you say to me you little shit <laughs> like one of his stances ever since he got popular was that i'm not going to stream with another like girl unless my wife is streaming with me which by the way what the fuck dude like he literally said like i can't remember the reason but it had something to do with like i don't want to make my wife jealous or like they're gonna, gonna catch feelings for me yeah dude like ninja you're not that cute bro. bro you're really not you kind of fell off 
so are, do you have a take that's different than mine on this or no? No. Okay, good. That there's a there's a right take, and it's like if this is based like based off misogyny and stuff like that, grow the fuck up. Also, that one guy got perma banned, by the way. Wait, Gideon did? Yeah, he did. Perma banned. Yeah, he got perma oh man, I'll because, see him on TikTok because more of often. this, he was like, also he apologized too on Twitter. He's like, I realized what I did was wrong, and it stemmed from like hate and stuff like that. And so like he apologized. Ninja hasn't. And now he got a lifetime ban from Twitch. So he's going to YouTube. But YouTube won't, if he tries even half of this, YouTube is like way more strict on things and you'll get like banned instantly. So they could ban him for what he did on Twitch, which is nuts. <laughs> he could be like, uh, God, what's his name? Ludwig goes to YouTube oh, on a it. deal and gets banned the same day <laughs> on YouTube. Wait, I actually really like Ludwig, which I love Ludwig. That's why it's hilarious because it's so Ludwig to get banned <laughs> on the first day because he was like, oh, I forgot I was supposed to do something. Banned <laughs> midstream. Wait, he went live on Twitch too. Yes, like exactly. <laughs> that, that's why he got banned because he was like, oh shit, I'm on the wrong app. And then gets banned on YouTube for it. <laughs> As he like just oh got God. a bag to go over to YouTube. I think my favorite thing that so that's one of those streamers that I will watch because their well, content he doesn't even do anything. He's I just know. like just chatting and like his content isn't directed at anyone. It doesn't feel like, but like his my favorite videos of him is like it's uh, like he gives his chat like an hour to buy things and he gives them their credit card and they basically will send him links on uh, Amazon and then they vote on if he gets to buy it or not and he spends like. Twenty-five thousand oh, yeah. dollars a stream. I saw a thing like that where XQC for Christmas he was doing that. He was like, "Let me see your Amazon wish list," and he's like looking through and he's like, "King mattress, a bed, a bed frame, some gaming stuff." <laughs> yeah, fuck it, I'll buy it. And yeah, then he oh, goes over. He's like, what? "Gaming mouse, um, the thirty seventy, um, uh, yeah, I'll, fuck it, I'll buy it." I mean, it's just a tax write off, but it's fucking hilarious just because. I don't know. I like watching XQC and making fun of XQC because <laughs> have you seen the videos where he's like misidentifying animals? Dude, yeah, it's like an ostrich, and he's like. Is that a dog? <laughs> like, oh, what? Wait, he didn't know what a donkey was. He's like, what is that thing? Is that yeah, a dog? What, what is that? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a streamer that's very toxic, but I love XQC. I like his clips. I did. I uh, definitely don't like I watch watched, his stream okay, that much. I, I watched but. his stream for an hour and he was only playing Balloon Tower Defense and he kept losing. <laughs> and he's just like, one more time, chat. One more time. It's just money. It's just money. And he like kept paying real money for extra yeah, lives in this Balloon Tower Defense. Yeah, he's gotten way better at like interacting with other people. He doesn't so that's like, good. And he, his streams are like a little less explicit and like, yeah. they're more, he he's catering as long as to you his, like Yeah, as long as you stay away from the like, the chat too much you're fine i mean i think he had to though because he started playing with people like ray and saikuno and stuff yeah and obviously they wouldn't want to play with he's him playing he was, Valorant with them. <laughs> he played mario party and like that was actually a good stream um so we can move on from some drama oh, to some pokemon which could potentially be some drama for some people that's true so there's a new game coming out for, oh you know be really smart to know january what time 27th Listen, I think it is. Listen, we brought him on for a reason. I think it's January 27th. Okay. I got a notification you can, from GameStop because I pre-ordered it. Why don't you look it up while I start yeah. mentioning it really quick? Okay, so a new game called The Legend of Arceus. For my whole life, I said Arceus, but it's whatever. Oh, January 28th. I'm sorry. It was a day early. Maybe I get it early because I have this cool podcast. Maybe hey. not. You don't know. Um, It's going to take place in the Hisui region, which is going to take place before Pokemon was like a... A thing. Yeah, before the common era of Pokemon. Before the original games, essentially. That's right. Is the best way to, I guess, like time jump it. Yeah, it's going to be like, I think it's technically Sinnoh because there's Mount Cornet and stuff. Yeah, it is. It's Hisui gets renamed into Sinnoh. That, I think that's what it says at the beginning of the review video. Okay. So basically this game is going to be... Like you, Diamond not and Pearl, but <laughs> 200 years in the past. It's not mainstream Pokemon game where you're gonna have the like, here's your starter, here's the gym leader, here's the Elite Four game. You know what I mean? This one's gonna be open world. It's gonna have. It's like figuring out how Pokemon became Pokemon, essentially. Yeah, it's a much more adventure version of Pokemon, which Do you I will say. You get Pokeballs. You have to build Pokeballs. That's it's like true. Rust. This is before Pokeball yeah. was a thing. Yeah. So like, we Professor will do. Oak wasn't even born yet. Actually, I don't know. I actually, well, kinda, wait, he's, he's been, dude, he's lived through a lot of games. This guy has been a professor <laughs> like 65 years old for a long time. Um, So we'll do a game review on this after it comes out. Um, But, you know, we might as well talk about it now because it's good content. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All for the content, baby. Um, and y'all love game reviews. Yeah, no, game reviews are really fun. And this will be really good because there's so much stuff you can do in this game. Um, 
So and let new me... variants too, which people like. That is true. Unless it's COVID, bad, bad new that... variants. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that. Oh, here. So I'll read what the like the setting of the game is really fast. So it says your adventure is set in an expansive natural majesty in the Hisui region, an age long ago when it was rare for people and Pokemon to live in close harmony. In this time, this land of Hisui will come to be called Sinnoh, a region you may know well. So basically, like I just said, it's before common Pokemon. You're going to go on an adventure and interact with Pokemon, but not necessarily like the typical battle train catch. No. So it's you- like the, what I compared it to is literally if Pokemon and Genshin Impact had a crossover. Dude, it's kind of it's kind of perfect too because I mean like you nailed it what it's like because it is you're like, definitely you're, you're crafting things, you can <laughs> customize your character more than just getting a new outfit. You can change the hair, you can change the color of the hair. Yeah. Um, How do you feel about customization in games? Because I think it's cool. I think everyone deserves to have a, something similar to their own persona in the game, whether that be a e persona that they like take on or a like a, in a, life, yeah, right? a physical persona. I think that is because so... I always play as the female Pokemon character. I don't know why. Because she's cute. I yeah. I've always the only game that I didn't play as the female character is in Pokemon Emerald. Hmm. I, I oh, don't know he why. actually was swaggy in that one. Yeah, with the he scarf did. Too. Yeah, yeah, he had like the headband too <laughs> and the white hair. Like, <laughs> if I could have white hair in real life, like an anime character. I think I would do it as long as it didn't look weird. Yeah, I think that's a really good point to talk about customization because I think I think it allows you to have more like you can get you more immersed. Yeah, yeah, you feel like it's you. And that, like, like NBA 2K, you can like fucking put your face. Dude, yeah, you put your face in the <laughs> game. That's kind of cool. Yeah, like it, it's a game for everyone, and it remind, that's why it reminds me of stuff like Genshin Impact, where there's so many different characters and character traits. It's just like anime where there's like so many different characters and worlds that you can find the one for you. Mm -hmm. And while I don't think this game is going to be as big as it wants to be, because unfortunately, Pokemon has a ton of haters. And you're going to lose a lot of fans because it's different, but different is good. Yeah, I definitely think this is a good step because it's like... Eventually it gets monotonous. You can't just keep remaking (laughs) games because then you end up kind of like Call of Duty every year. But see, the thing is, is people complained enough that you were making remakes and that you keep doing the same thing. But then when they came out with Alolan Trials instead of Gyms, and when they came out with Pokemon Sword and Shield where you could like see Pokemon in the overworld, Mm -hmm. people complained about that too. So like, yeah, it's just never going to please everyone. Exactly. And I think doing a stuff like this. Well, maybe that's why they redid Diamond and Pearl. And they're like, fine, for people that want the classics, here you go. Here's a classic game remastered. Yeah. and then, You can play this instead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, I think that whatever good happens from this, you take just that and move on with it. Yeah. If there, if there take, the, up, take the actual good critics and not the toxic ones yeah. and then mix it with the, what people really liked. Yeah. And like, you could use this to create your next Pokemon game. So maybe like this whole like crafting shit is the good part. So you keep the crafting and you go back to original games. And instead of like Pokemarts, you have to... Go, craft shit yeah or like, like get yeah like, exactly use cut on the grass to get material but then you still also have to battle gyms you know what I'm i mean Make you, it... watch out pokemon's coming to the oculus and it's gonna be vr eventually. oh my god that'd be so cool honestly i forgot i haven't looked at the camera in like 20 minutes oh uh, <laughs> um i think like because you have to physically i mean not physically but in the game you have to aim and throw the pokeball so this game is no longer like it's not just like oh yeah first battle let me throw a quick ball and see if it works no you have to like physically aim at the pokemon and you can just miss yeah you can and, and it's almost like pokemon go it's like pokemon go it is like, like pokemon go. you have to actually have some kind of i mean i'm not gonna call it like hard <laughs> skill. skill but like you know what i mean like a, a four-year-old yeah. can't just pick it up and be like i'm gonna catch every single pokemon or at least have a fair attempt because you could physically just miss yeah which and i like, think it's actually kind of cool because it adds that rng to yeah, it yeah i think the coolest thing too is like well one of the coolest things is that I think it's basically not I, be, I think it's confirmed now that like Pokemon natures will be what they're like in the overworld. So like if a Pokemon is timid nature, then in the game they're going to be timid Pokemon. Oh yeah, yeah. so it's the examples they gave was like Bid- Starly, right? Well, yeah, it said Bidoof will just it, it just ignores you. Like it doesn't care if you're there or yeah. not because that's kind of Bidoof's personality. Even if you didn't even look at its bio, you could probably just tell that. Yeah. Starly is timid, so when you encroach on a Starly and it notices you before you throw the ball, it's it will like yeah, away, it will yeah. run away from you. It's kind of like an Abra when you you get one chance to catch it, then it uses teleport. Yeah. It's timid. Or if you have like adamant nature, they're gonna be like aggressive and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they used um, Sphinx was. Dude, yes. And like, if you if you get a Pokemon like 
like too enthralled, it's gonna like start attacking you and stuff like that. Yeah, you know and what I you mean? can actually like not die, but it's almost like when you run out of <laughs> when you run out of Pokemon, like when you're battling, like say the Elite Four, it says, "Oh, you blacked out and you woke up at the Poke Center and you brought all your Pokemon yeah. back to health." It seems like, like your you, last save point. Or something, yeah, but right? you lose some of the crafting materials you had. Oh shit! So if you were like, "Hey, I'm gonna," it's like Minecraft. Where I'm gonna go get materials. If you die, you will lose. Say you get enough to craft ten Pokeballs, you'll die. Not die, but you'll faint. The game will tell you exactly what you lost and be like, "Hey, you lost X amount of items, so now you can only craft eight Pokeballs." Yeah. So there's like a negative besides just having to go back to that area to, like, not succeeding in a fight. Yeah, I, I don't know. I love this. This is so cool. Like they've been working on this game. They said for a long time. This is I, a game I think you can spend a lot of time in dude. because there's going to be so much to do. And I bet you there'll be like actual side quests, which Pokemon kind of doesn't have besides just going in every building. Yeah. And it's very open world. To me, it reminds me of in Sword and Shield, the open area. It's yeah. just limited to that one little like section until the expansion. But that's the entire game for this game. Yeah. Like, it's and like, like the old school Safari mode, but like, like you said, the whole game. Yeah. And like what I don't like about, was it Pokemon Let's Go? One of the games, it was like, you didn't really throw your Pokemon out to battle. It was just mixed in the Pokemon Go part where it was like, you just can catch them or something like that. Yeah. I don't really like that much, that that much, but I do like that you have the option to send your Pokemon out or you have the option to just try to catch it with a Pokeball. And then there's like boss battles too. Like that's so cool. Like when they- Well, and they changed the way that like, if you, if you engage with a Pokemon and you're actually going to battle it and it doesn't know you're there, like you sneak up on it, you get like- a sneak attack where like because it shows you like the <laughs> the tier like in this game it'll actually show you like hey your pokemon's faster so you will be attacking first and it'll show you like the breakdown of the turns but like it said if you surprise the pokemon you could essentially get two attacks in before that pokemon gets to attack you so that's like a, like an a jump almost like jump scare aspect of it yeah and so like what i was talking about for the um the boss battle so like i don't think they've announced how many there are but one of the ones they did show was Cleaver, which he literally looks like he has literally two cleavers, like two axes as yeah. arms. And okay, does it tell me what type he is? Bug Rock. Okay, that makes so much sense. Yeah, because uh, I think they use a Psyduck with Bubble Beam and it's super effective. Yeah, that makes sense. And so like you have to fight these like bosses, kind of like just like you do in Kenshin Impact. <laughs> but this Where, one, it showed that there's two ways to fight it. Yeah, like you could battle him with your Pokemon or you could hit him with his favorite food or something. Yeah, like that, you right? have to hit him with like the berry that like calms him down. He's essentially like enraged, essentially. Yeah, and I don't know if you get to catch those. So what I so I'm still a little confused and I'm sure we won't know until we play the game that one, if there's like gym leaders, you can go and battle. If there's trainers, you have to battle or it's elite for like, is there a winning this game? Yeah. Or is it just like, did you capture all the Pokemon? Yeah, just from, explore? from the video, it looks like it's just going to be like an exploration. Did you finish the Pokedex? Because yeah. there's like challenges you get. Like someone's like, hey, in the video that they showed, it's like, I don't remember what <laughs> Shink's ears look like. Like what symbol was <laughs> Wait, it? Wait, is it like, can you go catch one? Or yeah, what? and he okay. says like, go catch a Shinx. And then you literally just show him the Shinx. And he's like, oh, here's, um, I don't know if it was like crafting materials or XP or whatever it is. Like that's that was like a mission, essentially. Cool. So then I wonder if you were going to level up alongside your Pokemon. Yeah. Like in Pokemon Go and more RPGs. Than, well, because in the video, they specifically said, with just a customization, this is the starting customizations you can do. So it sounds like you'll be able to at least craft and unlock new, like almost like in GTA, where like the higher level you are, the more customization you can do to your physical body and yeah. stuff. It, they made it sound like that in this game also. That'd be cool. I also think it'd be really cool, which, I mean, they've experimented with it in the past, especially with like, the way they do it in um brilliant diamond shining pearl uh like online communication like what if you're able to do quests with people oh <clears> like a co-op almost that'd be so cool that would be cool because pokemon hasn't had that yeah like in pokemon now like you can trade and battle and like you can do the underground with people but it's not like you're really like doing things together yeah we're like in this one you really could like like hey, in Pokemon Go, when you battle together, yeah. like you could do that. You could go on a quest together and, and stuff like that. Fight the uh, what do they call it? The Lords or something like that. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't remember what they're Lord called. of the Forest. I think that's what they call it, Cleaver or God of the Forest. Mm. But if you could do an interaction like that, that's a hard interaction with multiple people. That'd be super cool. Yeah, I think. Uh, what does this say? Mythical. Okay, cool. So like we can talk about what Pokemon are going to be in this game. So we don't know one like how big the Pokedex is going to be. Chances are they're not going to include every Pokemon because that would be, what, over a thousand now, right? Maybe close to nine, 900, something like that. 
I think it'll be kind of like the national decks in BDSP, essentially. Ooh. Am I losing my mind? Does that have that has every Pokemon though, doesn't it? Well, not from any game after BDSP. No, but the like national decks does, right? No. Like, you don't go back and get like Bulbasaur and shit? Well, no, you can. I'm saying it doesn't have anything like it has up to <clears throat> Diamond and Pearl in the series and oh, then but backwards. That, yes, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, not yeah. forward. Okay, yeah. I was losing my mind. I'm like, dude, there's no way I caught like fucking all these Pokemon. Yeah, that makes sense. I also think though that like this one is confusing though because this takes place in the past. So it's only going to have like pre Pokemon. So I'm imagining fossil Pokemon 100% of this game. Oh, yeah. Like, like Kabutops, Aerodactyl, Aerodactyl yeah. like Pokemon like that, like Cradley and stuff. They're going to be in the game 100%. There's no way. But it's like, which Pokemon are going to be in it after that? Because... But are you saying they're going to be in as fossils or they're going to be in as living Pokemon? Oh, no. I think you're going to be able to go into a cave and one of the like bad guy or bad guys, like boss people you're going to fight is going to be, be a, a Kabutops. A Kabutops, an Aerodactyl. And on the way there, you'll find a Kabuto. You might find like an Armaldo, like the big oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. standing guy. Like you'll find shit like that. I think it'd be really cool if you get to find like, this is, oh gosh. It's in Sword and Shield, Dracozolt and Dracovolt and all those like combination fossil Pokemon. Yeah. It'd be cool if they were in here because they're like still fossils. Um, So we could talk about like, let's say the starters. I'll do the starters. You can do the next one. So the starters, you get to pick between Rowlet, Cyndaquil, and Oshawott. This is cool because each one is a different region. I yeah. don't yeah. know why they picked these. I'm sure there's an explanation. I think... Of them, the only one that to me makes sense is Cyndaquil because he kind of looks like a little like a creature. Like I okay, I know they're creatures. That sounded really stupid, but like Oshawott is very clearly just a little like uh like a panda or a polar bear. Are you serious? That's what I think he looks like. Oh, I thought he was like a little seal thing, an otter. A seal, oh, like a, a little yeah, otter. Oshawott. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, okay. And Rowlet is very clearly an owl. Yeah. <laughs> but like Cynical is like a dinosaur. I think he's like an anteater. Right? That's okay, so like, like uh from this, I really like that they chose Cynical and Rowlet. Those are two very cool choices. Oshawa, give a fuck less Mid, about it, honestly. Yeah. Like there's a I lot think, better water types they could have water starters. I think if you were picking water here. You throw Marsh Comp in there. Like a little mudkip? That'd be so yeah. cute. Yeah, actually. Mudkip would be really good here because he's like, he looks like a little bit like a dragon towards the end. And that kind of fits in the whole little like way mm -hmm. back in time. I was going to say Poplio, but uh, Poplio takes place at the same time Rowlet does. So, you know, you could do that. Um, you could do uh, Piplup though. Yeah, I was going to say if you, I mean, Cyndaquil is in there because I was going to say you could do like Croconaw and it. Oh, he would be dude. like very Crocodile Wait, forever. I think if you did Totodile here instead of Oshawott. And then changed Cyndaquil. That makes sense because Totodile totally fits. Yes, yeah. that makes so much sense for Fire. I think a lot of them could pick. I think honestly, you could do Imbor or like what Tepig that turns into yeah. Imbor because I mean it's kind of random, anyways. But he looks like a badass walking around like a fucking wrestler. Um, <clears throat> now, what we don't know is if they're gonna have Hisuian variants when they evolve. Yeah, because like Cyndaquil is just. Typhlosion's just fire. Just fire. When typically the third evolution gets a second. Exactly. Like yeah. Blaziken's firefighting. I would, Ashwat is. What oh is God. it? Oh God. He's just water, I think, actually. Is he? I think we just played ourselves. <laughs> well, Rowlet is, and he's going Clip that one yeah, if okay. you like it. Um, I think it'd be really cool if they made one of these types fairy when they evolve. Because it's not happened yet. Yeah, I think fairy would be a really cool type. And I also think if maybe one evolved into dragon, because you could do dragon fairy steel and it would circle yeah although not quite it would almost circle all the way but oh you could do uh dragon fairy poison there you go that's the triangle so that would be really sick mm -hmm. um but in the like trailers they have like a level like a 30 or 40 syndical or something like that i think they're very purposely not showing, showing. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 um so if you want to go over what <laughs> okay <laughs> You're going to be like, holy fuck, dude, how do you say these names? Uh, we'll do these instead uh, first. So you want to do the region yeah. variants? Hisuian Voltorb and Badass. Not what you expect. <laughs> he is, because this is, think about it, it's a time before Pokeballs were a thing. So actually Voltorb looks like Voltorb. He doesn't look like a Pokeball. <laughs> he, uh, so they made him wood. <laughs> he is wood, or, uh, well, he's made of wood. He's gla uh, grass electric. <laughs> I think on the first time you saw him, you're like, whoa, he's wood type. Yeah, wood type. <laughs> um, yes. And then Hisuian uh, Zorua. Zorua. Yeah. And then obviously the evolution form. Zorork, yeah. 
Um, they just essentially changed the color. He's now <laughs> white and red instead of black and red. But it's like cool like it almost looks fairy type just the coloring but yeah i think when i looked at it when they first announced it i think i thought he was fairy or i thought he was fire One it kind of reminds me how they have nine tails and then they had like glarian nine tails who was like psychic was it psychic no i'm thinking of ponita and rapid ash oh yeah i was like glarian nine tails is ice i think yeah, yeah yeah i'm thinking of rapid ash where it becomes like that same color combination like it's like white oh, with like yeah. the pinkish purple but this one is oh, fuck he's ghost normal yeah, and we said how broken Dude, that, that typing, typing is. Is, so is there a ghost normal good. yet? No, there's not. Yeah, because obviously counter for normal is fighting. Yeah, fighting can't, can't affect ghost. Exactly. And the counter for ghost is... There's a lot of things, but, but for the most part, it's like... Wait, it's, no, it's ghost the, again, like yeah. ghost versus ghost, but yeah. then ghost doesn't affect normal. So then the only His thing only that is dark. dark and fairy, if I'm not losing my mind. Um, I guess also psychic... Did, I, did we already say that? No. Okay, but, so yeah. Psychic would be. Um, but I still think that's a really good typing. Like competitively wise, it's competitively wise, it's a really good typing. Now, these next two ones you're going to say, one of them I fucking love. Yeah, so the next one is Husuian uh, Bravery. And I don't know what the typing is Let's, on that I'll, one. I'll tell you in like two seconds. Let's see. He is Psychic Flying. Wait, what? And I think I, think I read something on this that everyone overseas that plays Pokemon didn't like the fact that Bravery... His name was Bravery, and it was red, white, and blue. Like, it was in a very American oh, Pokemon. Wow, I didn't so think I, that. So I heard that they purposely gave this one a variant because it changes the colors because people were like, that's a very, like, an American patriotic Pokemon. It's like, it's a bird, which is like the bald eagle. Uh, it's yeah, red, white, and blue. <laughs> yeah, so I actually read that on Twitter that it was like, they were getting some some hate for that. And then Hisuian Whoa. Growlithe, which he looks bro Sick. he's so cool he's like one of those like fluffy dogs now that like has too much hair covering its eyes and i wish we could show you these fire rock yeah fire rock so a dog a rock dog i mean they have a rock dog already with rock rough but this is a cooler rock dog he looks like i can't imagine what arcanine's gonna look like oh damn dude he kind of looks like a um like you know those it looks like <sighs> smoke like it's almost like wispy looking oh yeah i didn't think about that i thought it looks like like George Washington when they were there, like <laughs> <laughs> with George the powdered <laughs> wigs. <laughs> he's got a powdered wig that covers his eyes, but he's so cute. Like Growlithe is a very loved Pokemon, and this definitely is a very like good variant of him. Like this isn't doing him disjustice. Kind of like how some people didn't like, like you said, like Ponyta's version where yeah. they're like they made him a unicorn and stuff like that. And it's like, bro, he's actually cute. But and something different in this game is instead of like Bidoof in the last game being your uh, your hm slave and like always showing up to do everything like waterfall surf cut everything this one you have different pokemon to do that so like to fly it is bravery and you kind of fly like on a it looks like a like glider but it's bravery with its wings out and you hold something in between like a pole in between its feet oh shit and then um to go surf you just had it pulled up um, oh the basculine version of them yeah okay yeah that's it's, what you use for surf yeah. in a uh, waterfall and then to actually get around in this game i don't think you're actually gonna have a bike at least they didn't make it seem like you were gonna have a bike like, you can, you like ride a pokemon do. yeah you're gonna ride a uh, weird ear oh yeah uh, somehow i totally missed that also yeah so that's how you get around and you can get around like really really fast oh yeah i saw that I, I it's did, like I riding did, I did. a horse essentially yeah like so it's weird ear is stantler right that's stantler's version and I'm a little confused because they gave some of these like variants different names because I well I thought it was Stantler and then the, they said weirder and I was like wait am I losing my Pokemon so like, knowledge I don't know if maybe he's just an evolution which would make sense they just like said like kind of like how Surfetched is evolved from a Farfetch but he's just in like Galar or whatever yeah. he was in okay so like. I'm assuming you have to evolve your Stantler to get a weird ear. Dude, Surfetch looks so cool, too. Yeah, you gotta this is like a freaking knight with his giant leak. Well, I think uh, it goes from a green onion to a leak. Spring onion to a leak. Really? Yeah, you may want to check that. No, no, no. He always has a leak as, but as is Psyduck. It, no, what, he has Psyduck? A, oh, <laughs> as, as Farfetch'd? As Farfetch'd, I think it's, it's a leak. Is it, it a is, leak or is it a green onion? No, it's a leak because when he evolves into Surfetch, it's no longer. It's a sword. Oh, He's got like a fucking not spear. As cool. He's like supposed to be like a... Uh, a guard, like an iron guard or whatever they're called. This isn't a little aside. I saw a thing on TikTok and it was like uh, ranking Pokemon on if I would eat them. And number one was Farfetch because they said he comes with his own seasoning. 
I'm just throwing that out there. I saw it, so y'all have to hear about it. Um, yeah, Weirder's cool. He's normal psychic, which typing wise, meh. Like, why not just normal? Make him... Yeah, normal. That's yeah, how I feel about normal I types. Just, like, I hate down. fighting against normal types too, because it's also like, because I never run fighting types. Dude, I don't run fighting either. You so it's just like, like Stunk Tank. I was like, dude, <laughs> um, this Pokemon runs through my team. But like, I think that's cool because Stantler is a Gen two Pokemon, and Gen two Pokemon usually don't get a lot of love. Like, but they have Cyndaquil, so I mean... Okay, I know, but like, historically, they were like, let's remake all of Gen 1 Pokemon to get forms, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, bro, I like Gen 2 and Gen 3, so... Uh, so then Basculin gets... Now, I'm going to say this fucking wrong, unless you heard him say it. Basculegion? Yeah. Okay, this typing is good. Water Ghost? That's oh, cool. That is like, cool. Not, it doesn't necessarily help you competitively, but the coverage that that has for you is so different than usually having, like, like your Ghost dark or your ghost poison or your ghost whatever ghost Usually walk. So, yeah they associate it with ghosts kind of closely yeah so like ghost water is totally different like uh i don't know if there's like lore behind this <laughs> i'm assuming all these pokemon are gonna have lore like this is why this pokemon is this way so like uh let's see you can have all this pokemon fights together oh so he uses souls to fight i don't fucking know oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of dark. This he's man also, ate spirit tomb and became a ghost fish. Nine foot ten. So uh, <laughs> no wonder you use him to ride on. Because before, wasn't it like a whalmer and like the uh, ruby sapphire and elmer or in emerald? Yeah, it's a well, it's a whalmer. Yeah. And look, I mean, the, I don't know if it ever specifically says, but it looks like one. And then also you could use Lapras in some games. Like in the very first games, it was Lapras, and then it was whalmer, and then in um, it's bit new. <laughs> yeah, in a uh, Alolan, Alolan, Sun and Moon. An ultra sun and moon it also has this like we use pokemon to move about so like you can ride like a rhyhorn or something like mm. that you fly with a specific pokemon every time all i'm saying is this game better have a fucking gyarados <laughs> it better have a gyarados that's all i'm saying if and if would. they have like a weird variant i'm gonna be upset if my gyarados is like psychic fairy gyarados i'm gonna be kind of upset because i like my dude you know what do the gyarados some justice why the fuck is he flying type? You ever seen a Gyarados fly? Why can't he learn fly? He's flying. You know, you cannot teach Gyarados any flying moves. He has to learn them normally. You cannot teach him a TM that's flying. He can't learn aerial ice? No, or does he, he, learn he learns ice? it. Oh, just I like see, he learns hurricane. Oh. But you cannot teach him any flying moves. But he's flying type. That is just a Nambo to make him quadruple damage to electric. That's, that's the true. only reason that they're because he is a, <laughs> he is a dragon and everyone knows it. He's right here I, for anyone that can't see it. <laughs> this thing does not fly. There's no wings here. You're joking. I think it's one of those, like, imagine if he was Water Dragon that early on in the game. Like, oh, yeah, you have a Dragon was Pokemon. very good in the, in the beginning. Now, like, I know you have, like, Kingdra, who is Water Dragon, who yeah. I fucking love. But, and he like, looks cool. Because he's a third evolution. Imagine if, like, that was a starter. A third, well, he got a Mega, though. Like, and his Mega's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Mega Gyarados is strong, but yeah, he's not. Wait, look, he like blends into the background when he did that. Okay, Ooh. weird. Um, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's pretty much it for Pokemon. Um, we'll probably like do a big whole episode on this as soon as we get our hand, our grubby little hands on this Pokemon game. Hey, speak for yourself with the grubby grubs. Hey, listen. Um, wait. Speaking of grubby hands, you're gonna have an extra pair of grubby hands around here really soon. Um, I actually won't be here next podcast. Um, we. It sounds like you're gonna have a guest host, but I. Yeah. Speaking of extra pair of grubby hands, <clears throat> my baby is getting evicted. He, <laughs> he, he is. He's decided he. We've. He's overstayed his welcome, and he is coming out. Um, if you're listening to this podcast, he's coming out Wednesday. So really. Yep. So I will not be here next week. So. So don't, there's don't, no chance of like. Five seconds from now, you're gonna text me and like, "Hey." No, he definitely can. He oh, definitely okay, could. okay. I didn't know if it was like a planned thing. Like, no, listen. Well, no, like he has up until his date and oh. then to do it on his own, and then. But it, from the looks of it, it doesn't look like it. So he's gonna be on his own. So guess what? I know he's not gonna be able to, but eventually, eventually, we'll get him to pick a starter, and we'll know whether we're keeping him or not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We're keeping him either way. But if he picks like Charizard, come on. Like, get out of here. Uh, wow. You know, that doesn't surprise me. <clears throat> Dude, I'm dying because this reaction. Um, by the way, I forgot to tell you, part of it, 
I like could not breathe out of my mouth and I'm a mouth breather. I don't know if you know this about me. <laughs> You're just sitting there suffocating. Yeah. This is one of those like actual flaws of me being a human is like, I don't breathe out of my nose very often. So How do you do like, that? Like, like gets me most of the time, but like because of it, I was like, dude, I'm going to die. Yeah. You uh, should. I always have to have him adjust his mic on discord. Cause it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I hope I didn't pick that up. Um, so that's pretty much it from this this week pretty much it from us this week guys so next week be look be looking out for a uh, certain guest host we're gonna have 2000s gamer dude on here they are uh super excited to be on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> they're definitely not worried about what they're gonna say i will say i do want to bring up one thing before this ends um last week we had ansley partosa i got the name down there you go okay she was here to promote royal brawl um I was told there's some updates, right? So she said like it went up to like $1,200 for like the max prize now for singles and doubles. Yep. Um, it's capped now. This tournament, thanks to, dude, thanks to good old fucking Sophie and Twister. <laughs> no longer can you enter this tournament. They have capped it. Yeah. They're not going to raise caps because it wouldn't be safe. Well, and they were worried that too many people would go there and get easy clapped. <laughs> I just think I like that. I like that it went from being like, guys please sign up like we need people to come here and then now it's like capped. it's like no we cannot accept any more people like this is it the only thing available now is the guppy bracket which by the way I'm signed up for i'm gonna smoke Sick. some people on king k rule um they also had to take some people out of the guppy bracket because pros were signing up for it like or not pros you know what i mean like local pros to be like easy hundred dollars you know oh what yeah I mean? well um, i think they don't i don't think she announced that there was a prize for the guppy is that new I don't remember. It's a hundred dollars, which is not nothing, right? Yeah. Because it's I mean it'll cover your entry fee for sure. Do you want the entry fee's like five bucks? Hey, there you go. <laughs> I think that's cool because it's like if you've never played in a tournament and like you're like, I'm gonna try it and you win it and you win a hundred bucks, bro, that's your calling, maybe. Maybe King K rule is a calling. So, anyways, January twenty second, this Saturday, Walsham Road. I'm not gonna say that just whatever, fuck it. San Antonio, <laughs> you can look it up on Twitter. Speaking um, of though, um, She's actually been streaming recently. I saw her last night tune into her stream with the Greater Gaming Society, and they're trying to get affiliated on their Twitch, and they're doing a pretty good job. When Dude. I joined, she had like 20, 20 people watching her play some Animal Crossing. So hey. if you want to support and you didn't get in because the tournament got camp or capped, why don't Twitch you tune TV in? Twitch TV slash Greater Gaming San Antonio, right? We'll put it in the description GG, so you can find it. GGS or something like that. There's a... There's a good name for it. Anyways, this will also be streamed, which it, we'll probably put that in too because why would you not want to watch some Smash locally-wise anyways? Um, we'll cover that too next week. Yeah. I know you won't be here, but I'll go over like who, who knows. Won and who Maybe didn't. we can find a way to Zoom me in. I don't know. Maybe that's too complicated. Maybe you need a break from Soapy for a little bit. Well, you know what? You can send me your thoughts and I'll read them live here. Um, that's pretty much it from us, guys. Um, unless you have anything else you'd like to say. It's time for plugs. It's oh, time for well, plugs. Yes, of course. Well, I did one plug. Yeah. Manscaped, baby. We still got it. We still have the discount. Use it while we have it. I don't know how much long we're going to have it. Yo, eventually For a while. we're going to get one that's going to be like a plug that you get to use Easy Clap, which I really hope it's something that that like oh, makes you may, sense you, you may be surprised. So if you use code uh, PUBSPORTS at Manscaped, you get $24 off the all-in-one package. So make sure you go and do that. Um, our official gym sponsor. Mm-hmm has actually given us a promo code to use at the gym for a Pog discount champ, on Pog your champ. monthly membership. <laughs> if you go to the gym and you use code easy clap podcast or just easy clap, you get 20% off your first month membership and no, uh, like no additional signup fees. So Damn. yeah. Well, speaking of using hey, code easy clap, there you a, go. You have one now. It's a good thing that fucking gamers are usually fat because they could probably use that their logo cause... is probably gonna go like right here our awesome producer is gonna edit it in right there it's mount olympus gym over at stone oak if it's a little bit of a drive go in for a day pass maybe they give you a discount or day pass they didn't give me the rights to say that but you know <laughs> easy clap podcast 20 percent off a day pass who knows well you can go for just one day yeah you can go for just one day i think it's like seven bucks to get a lift in oh well, well i definitely like won't it. be doing that but that's very really cool information uh sticking to the cardio stuff um Anyways, I don't have anything else I'd like to say other than like look out for a very cool episode next week. Look out for anything easy clap wise on Twitter, on what's the TikTok. Oh, that was loud. Um, TikTok. Yeah. Easy clap podcast on TikTok. I am at Jonah underscore Christ. It's not going to be right in the description. Um, he's catching a whatever. Catching a Gyarados in Arceus. You get to see how it works. Like 
Okay, are you going <laughs> to plug where you where we can find Yeah, you? Soapy Dishwater on Twitch TV. Um, you can find me at Shawnee Overwatch on Twitter. It's Sean Thompson 10 underscore. You can also find me at Talk Overwatch. I don't really post there because it's not the Overwatch season yet. Oh, just wait, dude. This this podcast, listen, if you're with us right now, you're going to be part of like the beginning crew of when we pop off for yeah. fucking Overwatch season. You're going to be OGs. Dude, you're going to be like, I remember when they were, I always see this. Yeah, it's not GG easy. It's OG easy, baby. You're going to be part of the original crew. That's right. So with that, peace. Peace, peace out. Peace. peace, peace.